What do you know? I forgot to shut those lights off again. That's all right. I ain't got that far. They're all talking. Heifers are probably almost to the end now. But what I was going to spin around for, those roadies right there. I guess I just haven't looked at the right time in the morning, or they just finally got all in the bloom good. That's an old drain drill at the base of them. Well, <laughs> parked under them now. Give you an idea how tall they are. But what's kind of amazing is you look at how full of bloom those are. Look at that one underneath the deck. It bloomed early and didn't bloom real good. Actually, part of it is. There's like three or four, maybe five of them actually in there. There's one right there that we trimmed way back because it was had a lot of dead, and I see a couple blooms on it. And you can see kind of the purple-colored one that's against the post. But the big one, that one is taking the brunt of the wind, the brunt of everything. It took the brunt of the cold, too, even though these are out in the open. And incidentally, that's where the hummingbirds like to stay in those. And yeah, chargers over there underneath that tub and I haven't heard anything yet this morning. I don't expect to yet. I mean, you know, business has got to open. People got to get to moving. It's only about 5.30. Just because I get up and start getting stuff done doesn't mean the rest of the world starts when I do. That would be one of the twins. Hi, buddy. Yeah. I think that's the one that might be a little bigger of the two. And don't ask me which one it is. If y'all have been paying attention, Ty says who they are. I just know them by their tag color. It's either Tom or Jerry. He's got kind of a bigger sheath, but when we let him out, he was looked like that. And she said it was all good, so... Yeah? Are you sure? And that's not your mama, Bellerin. I, I think his mama's probably already in the barn. Anyway, I'm going to get the light shut off so I don't have to come back out here. I might have to feed some hay out here today, too. My DME deal can just screw up. I have no idea. I still haven't got to plan out where the steers eat back here. Yeah. Ain't no hay left in that feeder. And there ain't much in that one. And that needs to get done. I should go in back in there later and there's part of a bale that was left from when Wally was in his run and throw that in the feeder for those guys. And there's somebody whose mama's got a little hot milk. She's got a little hair missing off her nose. She, uh, she just got a milk nose. But she's missing some. Half the girls are all right here to get. Actually, over half. I don't know if we got six or seven, but I mean, four of the heifer calves are all right here. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, oh, and I smell garlic really good here. We're, uh, is it this week? I think we're supposed to get some of that livestock salt with the garlic mixed in it from C90. Since we got a couple little bags and tried that, it seemed to be working. But we didn't have any, well, we don't have enough, so there's like a, I don't know, gallon and a half or so I put in there yesterday of regular salt we've always used. And that leftover garlic that mom fed the horses for keeping the bugs off. And the calves were going crazy over that yesterday. And I was going to shut this gate, but when the dogs don't cooperate, they might get stuck out there. I don't care.
Oh, uh, you don't hear it, but a little Zach Brown in the background talking about sitting in the sand, toes in the water, and we got all these ladies here. And, uh, Cowboy's behind that one over there. What do you think, Ruby? Junior cut. I don't care. Just give me some breakfast, she says. What do you think, Sapphire? Huh? Hey, you? Yeah, what do you think? Pick your nose holes? Oh, you like that? What if we run down the row? I stepped in something over here. Well, hello, Hopi Dope. Yes, hello. Yeah, I was just talking yesterday how you haven't been up to say hi, huh? Talk to her from a distance. Boop. Boop. Hope gonna reach for me again. I reach for you. Yeah, that one's kind of pretty solid, isn't it? Yeah, you'd be nice with those. What? Next ones don't want? How about you? You want to say good morning? You touched me. I didn't touch you. You touched me. Okay, that's enough heifer talk, right? What do you think, girls? Breakfast time? Breakfast time? Okay. Sapphire, do you agree? Sapphire, are you in the zone because you're hungry? Breakfast time? Okay. I'll give you some breakfast. And a little dork over here, if you notice what's behind him there. I didn't walk in to feed him. I walked around because I didn't feel like being with him this morning, being pushy. So he runs and jumps. and <laughs> He's got skid marks. <laughs> he went spread eagle and looked up like, what the hell just happened? I said, That's what happens when you crap where you got to walk. And I stepped in some over here, so now i got to wipe it off before I get up on the board. Good morning, Blakely. Hey, you. Hey, you. Blakely. We went in and talked to great grandma yesterday, huh? And you gave her some really, really nice, big, huge hugs, huh? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah. You gotta put the big one in the cage. Cause little Wesley's here today. Say hi, Wesley. Hi, Wesley. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi. How are you this morning? Huh? Yeah. Oh, a toy. Yeah. He's a little Blakely's short. Is that set for Blake? No, we know we put it down. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. He, he's touching the ground. He just ain't sitting in there very well. Oh. Blakely He'll get doesn't over. know how to share toys. Sharing is yeah, well, you know, the hard part. Coming with sharing. Yes, because she sharing wants everything has. he has. I don't like sharing. I want either, he has. Saying, you have all kinds of toys. You said hi to my hi, Wesley. Yeah, hey, that's anyway. Wesley, your friend. <laughs> yeah, hi, Wesley. I told you today. I said you got to see it. So nice and clean. I got it get on the other side and get the adjuster loose and then I can get the belt off and get this off and an eight suction side has a screen in this one I think that's the first one I've ever seen with a screen in it anyway just finally made me a phone call because I have not heard anything um, I told the told the guy at the trucking company I said I still haven't heard from the guy yet he goes oh shit so I haven't heard anything either. <laughs> we sent a truck out that way. So he looked up on the computer and the computer says their truck is at the guy's place being loaded now. It's a uh, quarter after nine and he told me yesterday they were figuring on being there at nine o'clock. I said, I haven't heard anything back from the guy. I haven't been able to get a hold of him. So it's like, God, I, hope, I hope he's really getting loaded. And uh, he says, well, you know, he says, in, in my world, no news is good news. So. You know, it shows on the dispatch that he's there and, and loading. So we should see something this afternoon. Google said, I think it was like a three hour and 40 minute trip. Of course, you know, that's not with an oversized load. So, you know, one, two o'clock, hopefully we'll see something. At any rate, I figure I got time to work on this. And there it is. I knew there was something on there. Yeah. 
March of 02 is when that compressor was put in. I guess it made it a long time, but you know, keep in mind, I already cleaned this up for the most part. And see, the only place all that goo can come from is out of that compressor. So, and yes, I cut the wire because I don't know that the wire on the compressor is long enough to get down to here, so I can always do something different there. We'll find out. And I still got to get in to get to that, which that's the access. Unless I pull the hood off, and I'm not pulling the hood off. So hopefully I can get that mess of stuff apart. It's either that or crawl in and lay over, but that's not very comfortable. So anyway, that's what I know so far. The well, there was intended for the steers, but as soon as I fired the tractor up, they all came in. So fed them first, get them out of the way. I wish more of them would go to that bale. The difference between the bales is I flip them over so when I dump it in the steers feeder, the knots are toward me and that way makes it easier on who's cutting the twine. They don't have to go around the feeder when it's mucky. But now we're waiting on the traffic jam to finish. You know, doesn't help the blues sitting over there. You can be a pain in the ass. Anyway, so as soon as they're done, we'll go drop a bale. Of course, I see two of them still halfway down the lane. One, one just being a happy one. Ah, she said 617D heifer was standing like she was in the show ring. So, oh, might have been that one, I don't know. Anyway, bad thing is, like I said, there's still two of them halfway down the lane, but we can probably deal with it if we have to. Hey, guess what? You get to see me from here, because there's no way I can tell what you're looking at. See his poor little nose? That's from one or two things. Oh, yeah. Hey. There's what she's putting on. It's charcoal, and this, actually, I mixed uh, it, so it's charcoal and bag bomb. I don't know what you can see because I can't quite. Yeah, I think you can see. Um, it's either sunburn, which I mean, this is one of the twins. Both twins have it. This is Jerry. Or they've gotten into groundsel and it's groundsel poisoning. And they're the only two calves that would have it, but I think it's sunburn because they we're, like to lay out. No, well, we're we're guessing it's sunburn because uh, they're that young and. They weren't out when they would have been able to get to the, there was some ground soil along the lane. And uh, they weren't out until they were in a three corner piece. And now I'm waiting for Ty to put her hand on his butt so I can let go of his nose without getting full of stuff. Now you leave that stuff on his nose, okay? So. Oh. But her teeth are, but she's got just kind of nostrils. He's a little back here. So. Minnie might have got into some because Ty just said she's got sunburn on her nose. Usually if the cow eats ground sole, the nose and the teats will be sunburned. And I mean, it's supposed to be overcast and rainy all freaking week, so I'm not worried about putting them in. But otherwise, we'd put the salve on their nose and you give them a shot of antibiotics because um, if it is ground so it attacks the liver so you treat it as you have to treat it as a liver infection is the only way to treat it well they'll run around with black noses for a little bit it'll make them feel better so and if if minnie's got it we're just gonna have to get her in because I mean, she may just have... She just normally gets a red nose, too, so it's... Who knows? I don't think it I mean, looks bad from bit, here. But it's not. If she ate just it... Just in her nostril. Yeah. Top part of her nostril. If she ate it and went through hers the way it the calves the are, her, her udder would be looking like the calves' noses. And her udder, other than being an old, broke-down girl, her udder looks fine, so... We don't comment on 
comment on my own lady's utter. Don't comment on her. Her mother was the same way. About eight years old, the utter kind of went, but you know, she milks. Yeah. They're all twelve. They're all the same age. No, they're not. Technically, Minnie's the oldest. They're all the same age. They're all old ladies. Speaking of boomer. They're, they're just three months different. Isn't that right, Bones? So, anyway. That's how we take care of them. I mean, if the cows got it, they'd get L.A. The calves, we gave them Batril just in case. I mean, it shouldn't be. I don't think it is. I think it's just from the sun, but it's not worth taking a chance. Don't need to find them out here dead in a week. And they're busy rubbing it on Mama's nose right now. Both of them are eating. And it's a friend there with his nose to the ground. Both her calves are nursing right now, one on each side. There he is. Belt lines up good. I took a little. There's slots in this plate. It's actually cocked this way to make things line up right. This one's not tight yet because I'm going to either put some shrink tube over that wire or run another piece of tubing. And then through that. And I'm glad I left the extra there to hook to. Not only do I got to swap it to a bullet connector or swap this, but I do have an issue though. I think I just left the bracket over there. I left it somewhere. Hell, I don't know where I left it. Anyway, oh, I left it right here. That goes to this hole right here. Do you see an issue? If I put that in just like that, it's going to sit there and rub on that pulley. So I got to offset it. I got to figure out how much it's got to offset. And then do it. And I don't know if I'm just going to try to bend it. Or cut it and weld it back together. I'll probably just try to bend it. Probably be the easiest. Well, the best in the long run. And what, quarter to three. Here in about an hour, we're going to meet a low boy down the road. Actually, we're meeting one of the company's combine trailers, but yeah, it, it hangs low to the ground. We're meeting them there because, number one, they can't get in our driveway. Hopper bottoms can make it. Low boys cannot. And I thought about we'd take him down the road, turn him around, but that's not the best place. The best place is we'll just go to him half mile down the road at an intersection flat ground it'll work the other option is they could go around the block which we've done that with a lot of hopper bottoms that are left here but there's one intersection there's a hump it's on a hump and i if he's too low to the ground he's not going to make it over it so you know thinking ahead for him it's just going to be quicker for him get him headed back home so anyway as i wander around in here aimlessly and Yada yada, there's the dirty piece of junk. Not as bad, well, that's wetter than that one. What's that tell you? Probably explains why we got to add to this once or twice every summer. Shouldn't have to do that anymore when we're done. Brilliant idea. That's the old bracket. This was the base, and then this went to the compressor, but they had a turned down nut that fit inside there. That's only 5 16 and 8 3 8 because it's going the other way. So, back to this one. What I did, added an eighth inch shim in there. And usually I would use the other clamps, but a regular vice grip, the jaws are parallel for sure. So that's holding these two pieces. They're as parallel as they're gonna be, as far as I can tell. If not, I tweak one a little. So I'm gonna add some hot glue to that. And that's what it's gonna be. I'm just glad I'm not out in a field someplace, you know, Doing a conversion on a tractor for some guy and finding out that the bracket don't work. It's also kind of like, I think I already mentioned it, this hose. The valve is actually right here, but when you bring this around, yeah, there is no way it can make it to that thing there. So I don't know what we're going to do there yet. Oh, if we have to buy a freaking hose or what? Yay!
Well, there's what we've been waiting for. We're going to unload her down here. And uh, go from there. I'm turned around, tight pulling it behind me. He's getting the trailer unhitched. And then we're going to see what happens. Hopefully we hook it up a little quicker than we usually hook the old 4900 up. It's a 2190. Still makes a 4x4 bale. Not what I was really looking for, but opportunity. And parts are all still available for it. It's 11 years newer than our trailer. And I'm hoping it's not in any worse shape. Well, pins in. Blocks are still tight under it. And uh, I'd love to get out and help, but I can't because you can't put these things in park when you're sitting like I am. This is straight up and down. Backs up on the low boy, fronts on the asphalt. So the next step is get the blocks out and go from there. Hopefully we make it happen without wrecking something. Oh yeah, and Nick's here helping too. I'm off the trailer. That was a fun job. So. I'm going to go home because she's picking water out the overflow now. I'm going to let Nick and Ty help him get out of here. So, I'm going. We really got done just in time because it's starting to dump. Ty and Nick are going to get him hooked up and out of here. Um, he said the other end was a real shit show. He said it was on sand, so of course the trailer dropped and then he couldn't get back up to it because he kept spinning out in the sand. And this end, I, I imagine he'll probably be telling stories later about this end. So, anyway, it's behind me. Um, we always block our pickup up when we're done for the year. They didn't, and for some reason it wouldn't lift. So we literally had to manually lift it up and pin it. Hydraulics wouldn't do it. I don't know why the hell. And I got water coming out the bypass in the engine but my oil pressure gauge is out there I still got awesome oil pressure so I thank you very much Ty is signing the paperwork and uh, I'm gonna get this thing home and parked and you know I'm, I'm hoping the only reason is because it's been sitting here idling for literally two hours to get loaded up I had trouble getting the pin lined up which that's never fun when you're on solid ground when your drop bar is sitting like this and your hitch is this way, that's even worse. He used to chain the free point to lift it and wiggle it around. He was chaining chains to the side of the trailer to pull it around. Uh, no matter what, it was a cluster. But like I said, thank God that it wasn't raining with the spring like two or three times, but now it's actually raining. So anyway, that's the end of the video for you. Let's see if I can get it up in a somewhat reasonable time. Because, uh, like I said, it's been two hours to do it. Pain in the butt. Would it have been easier closer to home? Maybe. But it's a half mile away, literally. So, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll give you a walk around tomorrow, I think.